I did a project with ideas. Uh, I applied to do a one-hour documentary about the art of apologies. And for me, it was, you know, in the current, I've done stuff before in their kind of 20-minute, half-an-hour format. But for me, it was really exciting to have the opportunity to work for a full uh, hour in that kind of format. And it was an incredible experience, I have to say, that um, first of all, just being able to work in a format that I hadn't worked on before, really had it on the current our daily life or our you know, regular kind of workflow is really intense. You're kind of a mile wide and an inch deep on most stories. So just to have a month, basically, to work on one story was incredible. But then also to be thinking about a story in a totally different way and thinking about storytelling in a really different way was also amazing. So um, the way that it was structured for me was I had about a week and then a couple weeks break and then three weeks to make the documentary. I worked really closely with uh, Mary O'Connell, who's a producer on Ideas. Um, and you know, the, their normal relationship is that they work with freelancers and there is a kind of, it, it is sort of naturally part of the way uh, uh, that their work process, how, how it normally works is to bring on a freelancer and to kind of take them to the process. But I kind of felt like it, with this, there was a bit more time and Mary as a mentor sort of knew that rather than the end goal of just being uh, creating a, you know, a product was to actually allow opportunities to pass on skills and to mentor. So that meant, I mean, there was a few things along the way that, that really, um, that, that it changed sort of how they work. So for example, you know, normally a freelancer will gather all the tape and do all the chasing uh, and then sort of hand it off to them and they'll cut it uh, and, and sort of come up with the final product. And you know, through the mentorship process, I really got to look, you know, be inside you know, Pro Tools, learn how to cut, learn how to really think in terms of mixing and sound mixing and use of, you know, sound effects and music and stuff that I think normally just given the regular, you know, flow of how those programs work, you just never would have had a chance to do. Um, so it was incredible, it was an incredible environment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the doc was incredible. And Sorry, I didn't mean to turn you on, to make you be quiet, it was just more like, this is exactly what we hoped right. for from the mentorship. Yeah. And uh, just to kind of preface, uh, Marika is in the middle of the doc boot camp right now, so her product is not finished, but she can comment on what it is like up until this point and why it will be useful for her, if it will be at all. I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. Absolutely. Um, so my name is Marika Wheeler. I work in Quebec City. Um, my job there is really cool in that I get to travel around the province about a, a week a month and I get to go to all these places where we don't have uh, any stations or any reporters working and gather material and then I work with the current affairs programs when I come back and provide mostly talk tapes uh, for four different current affairs programs. Um, sometimes I do do news as well and during like major breaking events I'll go there so I spent a lot of time in Lac Megantic and in, um, in Nidbet. Um, but I wanted to apply to this to explore and work on another way of presenting my stories in these programs I work on. I'm really luck lucky in that I have the luxury to take time to work on my stories. I'm not filling daily deadlines. So this was really wonderful opportunity for me to explore that and get some training for it. Um, I'm really finding the course super interesting. Uh, I really like the workshops we've been working on. Um, it's it, the thing that we're sort of grappling with is that we came with our tape already and a lot of what we're learning has to do with uh, how to how to gather tape and how to explore ways of, of um, using your interview subjects for example to do narration and stuff like that so it's really interesting and I'm really looking forward to apply the things that I learned here on the next things I work on um, it was it's always so wonderful when you get to travel to Toronto and come here for a few days. Uh, I've taken the radio skills and the storytelling course before, and it's just so nice to work with people who do the same thing you do across the country and to take some time to think about what you do. So much of what we do is in you know grinding stuff out all the time. Um, and to, to take a few days to think about what we do is always really valuable. And whenever I've come to a course like this, it's really motivating because it feels like you're being invested in by the corporation and that it, it gives you recognition that, you know, what you do matters in a bigger way to, to what CBC is trying to do. So it feels really good to be selected for a course like this because it, um, it motivates you and I'm planning on going back and doing a sort of like lunch and learn with my colleagues. Uh, I know some of them applied to come 
um, and I'd like to, to try and, in some little way, try and show that, tell them a little bit about what I learned here. So it's, it's a really fabulous experience. It's a movie. It's a movie made entirely with sound. And it's a movie that will play only and individually in the mind of each and every listener that listens to it. And by that act of co-creation, because it's your movie and their movie, they become invested in it, hooked in it. The characters you introduce them to start to live in their heads. The scenes you start to show them, they can see. And the, the story that you tell, they get. And what's at stake, they feel. So a radio documentary is a movie made entirely with sound. It's not a magazine feature. Many people approach radio documentaries as though it's a magazine feature that just talks. So there's a character who exemplifies an issue, and then there's two paragraphs with the, or three paragraphs with the experts, and there's another paragraph with the person exemplifying the issue. The person who represents um, uh, an issue rather than being a person, that's not what a radio documentary is. It's not an extended newscast. It's not a talk tape where you have some irritating host pointing in on your material all the time. It's not, it is not, it is not, it is not, it is not, you guys, an in-depth exploration of a worthy, important issue. It is not that. And I know that's going to sound weird and radical because like 99% of the pitches we got were explorations of worthy issues. It's a movie. It's a story. And like any great story, absolutely, it's going to cast light on some aspect of the human condition. That portion of the human condition that, that is being examined may well, in fact, be linked to a news story, or it may well, in fact, be linked to an issue. But it is first and foremost a story. So a pitch that says, for example, um, the issue of um, murdered and missing Aboriginal women is the most important thing ever, and we need to explore what's going on, not can go anywhere. We did receive a pitch from Santa Matter at the current. She's in the Stockton camp about one woman. Who's in Bella, La, Bella Lacombe? Bella Lacombe, age 26, graduate of fashion school. One night, for a reason no one knows, she falls from a balcony to her death. It's a story. It's a story that's going to make me think about the issue of murder and uh, missing Aboriginal women, but it's a story. So when you're thinking about <laughs> pitching, think story. Um, so this also, just, just so to be clear too, it also applies as much to ideas as it does to narrative documentaries. Tell, uh, narrative documentaries in the sense that with ideas, it is, there's something about this idea, there's something about this thinker, there's something about this conundrum, there's something in there that just has, it's just begging to be explored, just begging to be discussed right now. And it matters, it's that, that dilemma, that conundrum is personified, it matters to someone. It has to matter, it has to matter to the people involved in the doc, and it'll matter then to me, the listener. So this question of it, it doesn't have to be narrative in that sense, but in both cases, it's essentially telling uh, a story of exploration, the exploration in this case being that of the idea. Um, so, so, what, so a documentary then is a story, it's not a, an issue to be explored, it's a story or an idea that has to be talked about right now. Right now, I re you gotta hear the story, you gotta hear the story. So, stupid example, but when I came up with nonetheless, coming home last night on the streetcar, I go home to my husband and say, hi honey, I'm the streetcar, got off at the stop, walked home. Is that a story that just has to be told? Yeah. <laughs> but if I go home as I did one day and said, honey, I rode the streetcar and there was like this woman on the streetcar and I don't know, she wasn't old and she wasn't particularly young and she didn't look crazy and she didn't look poor. But she, st she started at the back of the streetcar and she stopped at every single person. And if they were, had a phone or an iPad or something, she would, she would lean over and say in this kind of mechanical voice, please put that away, it is bothering me. And she stopped at every single seat, at every single seat and said, please put that away, it is bothering me. 
So why is that a story that I want to tell him when I go home at night? There's a setting, the streetcar. There's a character, this woman. There is action. She's doing something. There's a mystery at its core. Who is she? Why is she doing this? What am I going to do when she gets to me? What am I going to say to her? And ultimately, that little tiny story does reflect on a bigger s issue, right? Like, who's crazier, all of us staring like this at our phones, or a woman who says, that bothers me, that's bothering me. Stop it, stop it, stop it. So it reflects in some small way on what it is to be human right now. So that's the story I'm going to tell them when I go home. And that, in a way, is exactly the criteria you have to meet. Would you go home and tell your best friend this story, your dog this story, your partner this story, your child this story? If not, then it's not a story that just has to be told. Okay. Um, and the other thing it is, it's surprising. So here we go. This is the checklist for you as you're doing your pitch. In your pitch, there has to be the potential. And again, we're looking for potential, not perfection. But for you to say yes to each one of these questions. If I'm the listener, will I go anywhere? Will, I, will you take me anywhere? Will you take me on a journey, including a, an intellectual journey, a kind of quixotic journey of curiosity, a journey of any kind? Will you take me somewhere? Am I going to meet anybody? Am I going to meet someone who is going to live in my head for whatever reason? Like the, there was an incredible interview this morning, Kathleen, on the current with this woman who'd made a film about um, twins and her stock, talking about her identical twin dying of leukemia. Oh my God, that woman's going to live in my head for a very long time. I met someone. Yeah, I met someone. Did I learn any will I learn anything? Is there going to be some, the most, you know, I, I'm a great believer that the biggest pleasure center in the body is the brain. Am I going to be intrigued? Am I going to be, is there going to be something ambiguous? Am I going to be challenged? Am I going to learn anything? Am I going to think, have to think twice? And that is the final thing. Is there going to be any surprises? That surprise element is one of the most difficult things, especially when you're exploring really worthy issues and important issues. Often, your audience is going to think they know, right? They know the answer. Of course, missing and murdered Aboriginal women is terrible. Um, of course, somebody pushed her off the balcony. But maybe there's something in telling her story that provides an act of discovery, whether it's discovery of character, discovery of something. There has to be something that surprises me in that story. Um, so. So we'll go back to the question of it being a movie and a movie made with sound. Steve Wadhams, the great guru who's teaching the uh, doc course and will teach it next term as well, has many Steve Wadhams-isms. One of them is that radio is the most visual of media. And it's all about pictures. Pictures, 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 pictures. And pictures can be conveyed through something as simple as an intake of breath. Right? All of a sudden you have a picture of the person on the other end of that breath. The words that I choose to use, the tone of voice I use, my vocabulary, it can be all in my voice, it can be in my silences, it can be in the story that I'm telling you, it can be in sound, it can be in scenes, the sound of somebody doing something, it can be in music. It's all done creating pictures through sound. So I'm going to make you do an experiment, really self-evident, close your eyes, everybody. Okay. Now I want you to imagine that you hear the sound of a train whistle and it's far away. Now you hear the train whistle again and it's much closer. You hear the squeal of brakes and you hear the train come to a stop. The next sound you hear is of someone breathing and you can tell by the breathing that they're running. And you can tell by the, the quality of their breathing that if they're male or female, you can tell if there's sobs underneath each breath. You can tell by the sound of their footfall, which you hear, whether they're male or female. Maybe there's heels, maybe there's, there's boots, maybe there's running shoes. You have the beginning of a story, right? You have a scene, a train station. It might be Winnipeg, it might be Moscow, it might be Anna Karenina for all we know. You have character, it might be Nicole Kidman in a fur muff and hat. It might be a young Aboriginal man. It might be any number of things, but you have a character. You have um, the beginning of a mystery. Why is that person running? Why are they sobbing? Um, what is happening? Who are they going to meet? Who are they running, who are they running away from? What is happening? It's a mystery 
and I'm hooked. And you did it with five sounds, not a single word. You did it with a train whistle, brakes, footfall, four sounds, and breath. Four sounds. And you've got a movie, right? You've got the beginning of a movie. You've cast it, you know, you're taking it to Paramount Pictures. It's there. And it can all be done with sound. And that's your challenge in documentary making. So when you're pitching, think about, does this have that potential? Is there a story I can tell? Can I create pictures in sound? Is it inherent in the material that I'm putting forward? Um, blah, 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 blah. So the last thing I am going to say is again the Steve Wadhams-isms. Here he is himself, the man I quote endlessly. <laughs> in making this movie, your camera is your microphone. Think always that that is, you can have long shots, short shots, all that sort of stuff. Think about that in your pitch as well. What are, what are the possibilities? As you're, because it doesn't take much to convince us on the other end that there's potential in this, not only as a story, but as a story that could be a documentary. So another Steve Wadhamisms, the king died, the queen died, a sequence of event. Um, death of the monarchy, uh, does it mean the monarchy is dead? Maybe it's a three-person panel on the current. The king died because the queen died is a story. And there's a documentary in there. He didn't make that laugh. He didn't? Who did? <laughs> he quotes, borrowed he borrowed it. Okay, which is the next one? <laughs> so the final thing you're going to see is in all the material, we've given you guys a bunch of material. Um, we asked all the documentary editors and vetters um, that we work with to tell you what they want. It's going to be all the same stuff, all the same stuff, all the same stuff. Um, the other thing they often add is, why you? Why are you the person to tell this story? S so sometimes it's something that could be assigned to any uh, reporter anywhere, but what is your connection? Why is it you're bringing it to me? And why is it a documentary and not an interview that my host can do? So that's the other thing they're looking for. So I'll give you an example of a pitch that, that we accepted, like a kaboom. There was one person who pitched two, she was in the do beginner boot camp, she pitched two things. The one that we went with was, when my kid was three, he was in kindergarten, and I got a call from the kindergarten teacher one day, and she said, little Johnny has been baking babies in the oven. There's a problem with little Johnny. And so she went to the teacher and said, my kids have grown up in a home where we read German fairy tales and English fairy tales, Canadian English, uh, and in German fairy tales, babies get baked in the oven. And so it becomes a story that is illuminates something about the very anodyne nature of, of Canadian children's literature, about how protective we are of our kids, it, all sorts of stuff. But it's a story, and it's a story that takes us straight there. And it's a story that you want to hear. So the first thing, uh, it sounds very cheesy, but in the in this in the section uh, in the application titled statement of intent we ask um, how do you plan to contribute back to the CBC and how will you share what you learn this section section sounds really cheesy but it's something that the committee took really seriously so um, if you work here and probably even if you don't work here you know that we don't have a whole heck of a lot of resources to go around and one um, kind of uh, stipulation about this project was that we want to share knowledge uh, and information to as many folks as possible and so um, but it was a tricky thing to answer like I understand why not a lot of people gave specific answers to that question and just kind of danced around if they were awarded this they would become a better journalist and contribute that way which a lot of people did but um, we had people, and you'll see in the in the successful applications that we passed around, we had people that did propose very specific and creative ways that they would contribute back, or or they could in their own tiny way. So a freelancer in there in Vancouver who was awarded uh, one of the mentorships uh, suggested that she was going to blog for the CMG's freelance portal, uh, Storyboard.ca, about her experience. Um, contract staff and employees. Uh, suggested that they would make themselves available to, you know, boot campers for next term to, to act as kind of like a mentor through the process after they'd already been through it. Or they would host a little lunch and learner information session amongst their own 
within their own department or amongst their own um, show teams. So those are specific ways um, of kind of showing your commitment. And another thing in this section is that if you have specific ambitions within the building, this is where you have room to let us know. Don't be afraid to, to be specific in, in citing your goals in the relation to, to your application and this experience. Um, and so uh, we hope to see kind of more out of the box and blue sky thinking in, in that one section. So that was specific to this application. Um, and then the second problem was in pitches. So as Linda alluded to, we did see a lot of uh, topics or issues pitched, but not a lot of, of stories. Um, so there were topics and issues that were important, that were worthy of you know an interview treatment, of a panel discussion treatment, um, but they lacked uh, characters in a lot of instances or a heartbeat or a risky or unique treatment, like a documentary style treatment um, that uh, necessitates or, or is worthy of a long form doc format. Um, and from talking to many of you, I understand a lot of people were hesitant to pick up the phone and, and try and find sources for a story that they haven't been approved on. I totally get that. And there's lots of ways around that. So you'll notice in one of the pitches that you see there, uh, Gord Westmacott, he pitched um, a, a very worthy news topic uh, about uh, foreign fighters being recruited in Canada, which we hear about a lot in interview formats and panel discussions. But he um, wanted to, he wanted to tell us about the, un or he wanted to understand what motivated people. And, and therefore, he wanted to find three people, and in a, a doc without any narration, he wanted to give us insight into the decision-making behind those three characters. He had some names in mind, but he, those names weren't really that important. It was more so the idea that he wanted to convey. Um, and so, so that's, an, that's an example of how you can kind of tell us what you want to do, tell us who you, the type of person you want to talk to. You don't have to give us their name and phone number. Um, um, what else? Um, oh, sure. Yeah, I actually do have, uh, yeah. Um, an, a lot of people listed facts, stats, and studies in their, in their pitches, which is kind of a big red flag for the committee right off the bat. If your pitch starts with, you know, a recent study or one in four Canadians, um, you know, it can be fine. Those things can be a good springboard or a peg for a doc pitch, um, but they illustrate topics and issues, uh, not stories. So your, your story should focus, or your pitch should focus on a story, not a stat. Um, and so again, Gord does list uh, a stat in his pitch. He says the number of, of Canadians that are thought to be fighting abroad with ISIS. That, that is part of his pitch, but it's definitely not the focus. It's, it doesn't end there. He goes one step further and finds uh, that emotion, that heartbeat um, that necessitates a doc treatment. Um, and then fit. So Linda spoke to this about um, someone's, I can't remember whose pitch, um, why you are the good, oh, yeah. the right person to tell this story. And it is tricky. I completely agree with you. But um, it is uh, it is possible. So another one of our mentors there, Willow, a freelancer, she wanted to uh, do a story on the relationship between that deaf people have with music, producing music, loving music. And she herself is hearing impaired. And she was willing to insert herself into the story. Um, Daniel, whose application you also have there, is in our intermediate uh, doc boot camp. And he saw that, hey, there's this new Canadian app called Cuddler. It's getting a huge amount of attention and traction. People are, are downloading it. Cuddling is this new weird thing. I'm sure you've read it. It's like very zeitgeisty right now. But he's like, I'm willing to try it out in my doc. I'm willing to insert myself. My girlfriend is abroad for a couple of months. I want some cuddles. <laughs> so I am willing to insert myself. Yeah, so. <laughs> So he fit himself into his doc and made it personal. So even when Cuddler, you know, that isn't necessarily a, an emotional, personal story, he made it personal in his pitch. Um, and then the last thing, uh, many people uh, in their applications didn't necessarily show that they knew the type of show that they wanted to work on or mentor work with. 
Uh, so they said that they wanted to, uh, you know, have a mentorship to do a doc for Day6 or for Spark. Well, if you knew, if you listened to either of those shows, uh, you would know that their docs are much shorter, uh, five to ten minutes. And we can't really justify a two-week mentorship um, for you to produce a doc of that length. And so hopefully um, that handout there will be helpful so you can actually take a look and see um, what shows um, require different types of treatments or lengths and then what exactly it is they're looking for. So pay attention to that fit because that kind of indicates something bigger which is that you actually listen to the shows you want to contribute to. Um, so uh, that's last the last thing. Oh and don't be afraid to contact your potential doc editor or your mentor ahead of submitting your application. So everyone that's listed on that on that handout there is is welcoming um, your, your pitches. They're welcoming your pitches prior to the application. If you want to run it by them, shoot them an email. Does this sound like something you're interested in? If it's a yes, highlight that in your application. There's space for that. What, under what show do you think that this uh, will fit for and who do you want to work with? You can you can say, you know, I, I really want to work with uh, Nicola from Ideas and I've ran this by her and she she's keen on it. She likes this idea. That's a great way for you to kind of get ahead and it's what separated in many instances um, good applications from great and promising applications.